guys, welcome back to another week of Kidopolis with Miss Jessie. We are in week three of the month of July. Um, this summer, June and July, we are talking about faith. Uh, trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. Um, and we're doing that by working on our focus. We need to remember to take a closer look at things. So today to talk about our lesson, I have a very, very special guest star. So excited. Let me, let me get him for a second. Okay. Am I still filming? Okay. As you guys remember, maybe we adopted a little baby hedgehog about a month and a half ago. If you don't remember, this is Butterbeer. He just got a bath. So he's a little bit grumpy. Um, and that is something that I'm learning about Butterbeer. He does not like baths. And I'm learning a lot about him. When I wanted a hedgehog for a pet, saw a lot of really cute pictures on the internet of hedgehogs. And I was like, oh my gosh, they are so cute and snuggly. I can't wait to rub his little belly. And we're going to be best friends. And we are pretty good friends now. But, you know, it took a while to get here. Like, it took a while. Look, see how I can... I can pet his quills now, and he's okay with it. He still doesn't like his head touch. Watch. Oh no, he's letting me touch his head today. Okay. Oh, did you see that? That little huff? Sometimes he huffs when he's mad at me. Sometimes, and he doesn't do it very much anymore. But sometimes he huffs or hisses at me, and then his quill, quills, these things on his back, they're they're pretty pokey. But they're wor at the worst when he kind of crisscrosses them. When they're all in one direction, do you guys see how they're all kind of facing one way? They're all going backwards right now. It's okay. It actually doesn't hurt. It feels kind of cool. But when he crisscrosses them, oh my gosh, that hurts. And there's other things that he can do. Oh, he's bit me before. Not very hard, but he has. And there have been times when I'm like, oh my gosh, does my hedgehog hate me? I thought, I'm I, thought I was taking good care of him. I thought we were buds, but apparently not. Um, but... As I got my baby hedgehog and um, we got to know him, we also did some learning about hedgehogs and we learned about how they communicated. And we know that when they huff, we'll see the thing he's doing with his head right there. That means he's a little nervous. When he, when his brow goes like that, I used to think it was, it means he was mad at me. But what it means actually is he's starting to feel a little bit uncomfortable and he's thinking about balling up. And when he crisscrosses those quills, that means he feels scared and maybe he needs to defend himself. And when he hisses, that's kind of like a warning to get a, like get away. I'm not super comfortable. And you know what? Honestly, people ask if they bite, and he has bitten me a couple times before, and it's not very hard. He doesn't bite very hard. Um, and I was like, wow, he's mean. So there's so many things that I thought, like, he's mean, and he doesn't like me. Um, he doesn't want me to pick him up because I would go to pick him up like this, and he'd get mad. But then I learned some things about him, and I learned about how hedgehogs tell us what they're feeling. And I learned about the biting. I learned that they're basically blind when it's light outside. They, they have really good night vision, but in the daytime, they can't see anything. So if my hand might smell like food, or if it feels like something that might be trying to attack him, he might try and bite it. And when he, like, now he's okay with me picking him up from the back. But that's how, like... This is going to be a little bit of a sad visual, but like when they're in the wild, that's how like the eagles or whatever pick them up. So that's why it's better like when we go to pick them up out of his cage, we scoop them up like this. So we're learning things about each other and we're learning um, not to get upset uh, because of what it seems like he's saying to us. We're learning, okay, we know some things about hedgehogs. We know a little bit about this guy and what he likes and doesn't like, but that doesn't mean that he doesn't like us or wants to bite us or wants us to bleed and that's really important because I'm gonna I swear you're like Miss Jessie I think you just want to show off your hedgehog yes but also knowing Jesus changes the way that you see your problems okay so I try to give us metaphors if you're like maybe third grade and up you know what a metaphor is but I try to give you examples of things in your life to tie into your relationship with Jesus. And that's what I'm trying to do here. So knowing about hedgehogs, knowing butterbeer changes the way that I see 
him poking his quills at me or biting me. But knowing Jesus changes the way that you see your problem. So we'll talk about Paul and how that worked out for him. You guys remember Paul. We talked about him so much, right? We knew that he used to be a scary guy. His name was Saul when he was scary. We know that he was persecuted. He was arrested. He was bullied and made fun of and injured because of his beliefs. But we know that he just preached the word of Jesus and the word of God, the good news of Jesus, every day. Okay? So here's some more about his life. I'm going to go through it really briefly. I actually have it in a list because it's like so much. Like there should really be, like there's probably a really cool movie that needs to be made about this guy. This part, like, I think this part would make the best movie of his life. So listen to this. And um, if you want to read this in your Bible at home, it's in the book of Acts, chapter 27 and chapter 28-ish. I'm not sure the exact verse is. Okay, so Paul was arrested somewhere. Um, and they wanted to take him to Caesarea, I think. But basically, in order to get there, they had to get on ships with a bunch of other prisoners, a bunch of them, like over 200. And while they were on these waters, there were storms, like huge waves, torrential downpour. Like, it was a big, scary mess, okay? And um, it did not look good. It did not look like the ship was going to survive it. God told Paul what he needed to do. What would you do if there was, like, a huge storm? And, like, you would... I would probably try to get in the safest part of the ship, which I'm not even sure I know what that is during a storm, but probably the driest. Maybe try to get on a little lifeboat and maybe the lifeboat can navigate better. But this was like way back when they didn't have like motors or anything like that. They just had to use like their own power. So maybe not. I don't know. But God was like, here, I have an idea. This is, this is what's going to help. Crash the ship. So that's what Paul, he's like, guys, we need to crash the ship into a beach. That's what it. And there are people who were like, nope, we're going to take the lifeboats. But um, Paul or maybe some of his buddies cut <laughs> the ropes for the lifeboat. Nobody got to use it. And what happened was they actually did wreck the ship on a beach. And there were people there on the island. It was called the island of Malta. And they built a huge fire to, like, welcome them. So imagine like this huge bonfire, maybe there's s'mores, graham crackers, Hershey bars, the whole works, okay? And then all of a sudden this big scary snake, I don't know if it was big, but it was definitely scary because it was venomous, came up and bit Paul. And you know what Paul did? He shook it off into the fire. Just shook it off. Let's just have this big scary snake. Oh, he's scared of snakes, look. No snakes! <laughs> big scary snake bit Paul. He just shook it off. And then, do you know what else happened? He didn't even get sick from the sick snake bite. So this guy, he was like the chief of this land. So I just want you to, again, picture that as a movie. How cool is that? Huge storm. Crash the ship. That would have some really cool special effects. I don't know who would do the soundtrack. Hopefully the same guy who did Jurassic Park. Um, what's his name? I know what's his name. John Williams. John Williams. Hopefully John Williams does it because he does some really good music. Um, and then the snake bite. Oh. So the chief of this, these people, he's like, hey, my dad's sick. You're probably a god because nobody survives those snake bites. I'm sorry we're talking about snakes. I'm going to put them in his little... The snakes are scaring him. Um, you're probably a god, Mr. Paul, so why don't you come and heal my dad? And Paul did. He healed the dad. And then all the people were like, heal me, heal me, heal me. And Paul's like, you get healed, and you get healed, and you get healed. And everybody was healed in the name of Jesus. And then um, they, the people of Malta, gave Paul and all the other people um, supplies so that they could finally go to Rome. And Paul got two years of preaching the good news of Jesus to more people through all of that craziness. So Paul didn't see his problems arrested shipwreck well before the shipwreck crazy storms being told that he like can you imagine if you were the crazy guy in a ship he's like let's crash the ship and then like can you imagine do you think people on that ship would be your friend probably not so then he was like crazy guy in the ship ship got crashed and then snake bite i also forgot to say that when they when they were on the island they were afraid that people were going to swim away to safety so they were like what do we do about this and uh, I'm, I'm not exactly sure how that played out, but they did get to go to the bonfire where he got bit by a snake. 
Maybe he probably would have liked to have been in a jail cell instead. But he didn't see those as something to stop him. He knew that God was always with him through the good and the bad. And we can remember that when problems seem overwhelming, okay? So again, knowing Jesus changes the way you see your problems. All these problems that Paul had, he knew Jesus, but he knew it was going to be, he knew Jesus, so he knew that it was going to be good. He knew that things were going to work. And something that, in all logic, and um, all of right-minded, that makes sense, state of thinking, yeah, that's, that's kind of scary, that's kind of worrisome, that's not good. Paul's like, it's okay, I know Jesus, and I'm not going to worry about that. He kind of, um, just the fact that was there, it's almost like he put on a different pair of glasses. So, again, knowing Jesus changes the way you see your problems. So think about something in your life, and maybe you have a pet at home that is, you know, might seem mean, but maybe they're just trying to tell you something that is not what you think. You might think, like, my dog doesn't want to play with me. Maybe he's just tired. But you can apply it to other things in your life, other big, big problems in your life, um, to help you get through it and to help, to help you remember that God is with you and that Jesus is going to be there to make it good. And now it's time for the so-and-so show! Yay! One or two? One. One or two? One. Can I try this one? One or two? One. Last one. One or two? One. Okay. Yeah. I'm Brandon. Oh, yeah, I'm John. And welcome to The, the So-and-So so -and -so Show. We have an incredible show for you today, I think. I think it might be yeah. one of the best shows ever. It's the best an show. Epic, yeah, an mm -hmm. epic Bible story. Lots of fun and hilarious antics. Mm -hmm. Plus, hmm? I, I don't know what you're doing. I got new glasses. Oh. See, look at them. Oh, what? Man, every time. Why did you... The show's going well so far. No, 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 and this is not a problem. Let me just, I'm, I'm just, gonna, right. just gonna get those, all right? Okay, well, they're not over there. Where, where do they go? They're... You threw them in front of you. Oh, sorry. Okay, well, I'm coming back over here. You know, I, you know the, my old prescription, you know, it gets old. That's why they call it an old prescription, right? Yeah. And every now and then you gotta get a new one so that you can focus a wee bit more. My, right there. Where, where? Look where I'm pointing. I, I, I can't. Right. I'm sorry. They're on the ground. They're on the ground. Oh, right. do you down. need me to help you? No, 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 no. Hold on. I. Oh, I found them. Uh. Oh. Okay. Okay. Let's work. Is it okay? Oh. What? No, they look good. Uh, <laughs> this isn't gonna work. Oh no. <laughs> okay, you know what? No problem. I don't want to ruin the best show ever, so I'm just gonna go upstairs and get my old glasses. Do you want me to get them for No, me? no, 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 no. You stay here and, and make the show happen. Okay. Uh, that's not the door. Okay. It's. Do you need. I, I'll tell you what, I'll just stall yeah. until you get back. And okay, then we'll sounds good. Have the best show ever. <laughs> All, right. All right. Do you need me to help you with that? Yeah. I, 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 there's a hole right here. Yeah, well, there's a handle okay. below that. Okay. Oh, oh there's. What did I do? I don't know. I can't get my finger up. Ow! These doors are hard. Yeah. I'm gonna get these fixed. Wow. Ow. Mm. Oh, okay. Let's see. Okay. Best show ever. Here we go. I know, everyone likes poetry, right? Here's a new segment I call 
Haikus with Brandon. So and so, and so. One too many so's for show. Two will do, three, no. Man, haikus are short. Is John back yet? I'll just, I'll just, uh, hold on. <laughs> John! Brandon? Yeah, John? Can you hear me? Yeah, where are you? I'm not sure. I. Uh, oh, wait. <laughs> Brandon? John, how did you, how, how are you? I don't know. I can't see anything. Everything is so orange. Well, I, I mean, can you go back the way you came? Like, retrace your steps. Okay, I'll try. <laughs> John B. Lost in a world of orange or a world of orange. John? What? Uh, I'm still here. Brandon, you gotta help me. Uh, I anyone? Help! Wait, Anyone? no, John, don't leave me here! Not again, not again! No, 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 no! I got nothing! Nada! Zilch! This isn't working. What do I do, what do I do, what do I do? I'd say this qualifies as a co-host emergency. Here goes. That was fast. Yeah, it was, Brandon. Oh, no. Oh, yeah! Well, howdy doody, everyone. I'm Fred. And welcome to the So and Fred Show. And this is my co-host, a Brandon. Brandon, right? Hi, Brandon. Exactly. I can't believe you're my emergency co-host. <laughs> Please welcome Howdy Doody, someone who knows stuff. We don't have a guest today. What are you talking about? Ah, oh, Brandon. Friendly banter. A friendly banter. Friendly banter. Oh boy. <laughs> Laugh authentically. Ah, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> oh, Brandon, that was a good one. Who's up for some more haikus? Ask a question. Make direct eye contact, making your co-host believe that you are actively listening. Fred? Mm-hmm, yes, howdy doody. Yes. What are you doing? Oh! I'm just putting into practice all the things I learned on my online class. Hosting for the internet. John! Huh? Huh? Whoa! Howdy doody! Please welcome someone who knows stuff. <laughs> what is happening? Who are you? Tell us what you know, John. Is that Fred? Yes, yeah, me, Fred. I'm here with Brandon. How'd you get up there? Hey, John, I really could use you back here right now. You broke the glass, didn't you? I didn't know what else to do. I I, 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 I had no... I, wait, no. Uh, it's Bible Story Time with Kellen. What's up, fellas? Oh, oh. Hey, hey, what, what are you doing here? Oh, Kellen and I, am I happy to see you? Uh, thanks, but wh why are you... Who are you? What do you know? Fred? You broke the glass, didn't you? 
It was an emergency. <laughs> That's a good one, Kelster. Kellen. Fred. And this is Brandon. Brandon. He's my best friend. Thank you, Brandon. Help us, Kellen. This is a disaster. Actually, this works out great. Huh? Yeah, one of the so-and-so show players called in sick, and it's a pretty epic sea voyage story, so we're going to need all hands on deck, so to speak. The so-and-so show players? Yeah. Do you think you can fill in for us? <gasps> can I? Yeah. Oh, it's, it's that way. Okay, so you may have heard of this guy named Paul. He wrote half of what we now call the New Testament in the Bible. Paul had a mission to tell the story of Jesus to as many people as he could. He traveled all over the known world doing just that. God even promised Paul that he would take Jesus' story all the way to the city of Rome. But God didn't promise it would all be smooth sailing. Whoa! Whoa! Back then, talking about Jesus was against the law in some places. So Paul was actually in prison when it was decided his case would be tried in Rome. The plan was to travel safely to Rome by ship, but a horrible storm changed that plan. Don't worry, Captain. An angel told me last night that not one person will die on this ship. Yay! Uh, only the ship will be lost. Oh. Not my man! Ken? We must run the ship onto a beach somewhere. Welcome to Malta. Not yet. What? He said beach? Later. Oh. Hurry! The storm lasted for weeks. The crew was frightened and hungry. They had wondered if Paul had been right about everyone being safe. But then, just when they were about to lose hope. Land ho, Captain! Where? Oh. There! We've run aground on a beach! Welcome to Malta! No! The ship's breaking apart! Ugh. Swim for it! Oh. All 276 people on the ship reached the shore safely, just as the angel promised Paul. They hadn't made it to Rome, but rather an island they were unfamiliar with. Oh, help me. Whew. It's cold. Oh, maybe we should make a fire. Yes, do that. Where are we? It looks like any other beach. I said, it looks like any other beach. Welcome to Malta. <laughs> So, yeah, their ship crashed on the island of Malta, and the villagers of Malta were very kind to their unexpected visitors. We thought we were goners for sure. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but then our ship crashed here, but not one person died. Not one. <sighs> you all have been really great, by the way. Thank you. <sighs> okay. Uh, here we go. <clears throat> Ooh, ah, snake! Oh. Oh. oh, Dad, he must be a murderer! Oh. He escaped the ship, but the God of Justice won't let him live. Ouchie. He will surely swell up. He will surely fall dead. Ooh, look, marshmallows. Can I?
Whoa. Paul and his shipmates stayed on Malta for three months. While they were there, Paul prayed for the villagers and those who were sick were healed. And when their ship was repaired, they completed their voyage to Rome, where Paul told people the good news of Jesus. The end. Great story, Kellen. Yeah, it's wild, right? Storms and shipwrecks and snake bites. Talk about things not going according to plan, huh? <laughs> Maybe not Paul's plan, sure, but it looks like God was in control the whole time. Oh yeah, if it weren't for the bad things that happened, everyone may have missed out on the good things that happened on Malta. Plus, it wouldn't have been as good of a story. Hey, you're back. Yeah, yeah, the so-and-so show players show me a shortcut. Turns out they're not so bad. Oh yeah, they're amazing. Yeah, let's not overdo it. Thanks for letting me visit, Kellen. Listen, I know the show didn't go the way you expected, but, but I think it turned out great. God has a way sometimes of making something good come out of something that seems bad. You just need to remember to focus on Him instead of whatever's happening. Yeah, wow, that's great. Thanks, Kellen. No doubt. I'll see you next time. Later. See you, Kellen. You know, he's right. Something good can totally come out of something bad. Like, Today, I got trapped in Kellen's bubble, which seems bad. Yeah, but then Kellen needed you to help tell the Bible story, which was good. Mm -hmm. Although, we did have to change the show at the last second, which seemed bad. But then you got to finally share your poetry with the world, which was good. True, true. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. Did. And then Fred came on as your co-host, which seems bad. But then... I'm, sti I'm still thinking about what the good is. Where is Fred, anyway? I don't know. Reveal the question! Oh, when have you seen something good come out of something bad? Yeah, you saw how things worked out for us. What about you? When have you seen something good come out of something bad? You know, Brandon, I don't think this was the best show ever after all. Oh, no? I think it was better. Oh, can you be better than the best? Yes. Okie doke. That was the so-and-so show, folks. See ya, folks! <laughs> Whoa! I'm in a bubble! Howdy doody! I'm in a bubble! How'd I get here? Howdy doody! In a bubble! Okay, so we're going to do our memory verses. Um, just a reminder, send me a video or if you see me like in the store or something of you doing your memory verse um, and I will get a treat to you. Just because we aren't seeing each other in the room on Sunday doesn't mean you you don't get your treat for memory verse. So let me know. I'll make it happen, happen okay? So, it's been a while I think since we've done the finding the memory verse in the Bible, so we're going to do that, um, just in case you haven't seen it before, or if you forgot, because like, I know I forget some things on summer vacation. So here we go. Our memory verse is Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. So, in my Bible, and I think in a lot of Bibles, they have two ways of finding the book, if you don't have it memorized. Um, one of the things about Ephesians is that it was written by our buddy Paul. Right, it was written by Paul. Correct, yes. And um, so that means we know, if we know it's written by Paul, then we know it's in the New Testament, right? So this is like if you don't have this and you're just wanting to think about where it is. Okay, so if it's written by Paul, it's in the New Testament. It's obviously after the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And it's obviously after the book of Acts. So it's somewhere in there. Maybe you're one of those fancy people who memorized the order of the books. But if you didn't, you can use this kind of thinking to help you find it. So... Written by Paul for the church in Ephesus. And the people of Ephesus were called Ephesians. That's how God's name. Um, so, since we just went that way, we'll go through. In my Bible, it's split up um, in order that it is 
from front to back in the Bible. But there's also a way that it's alphabetically, like if you have like, oh my gosh, I have no idea where it would be in the Bible. Let's just, I know it starts with an E, there's the E. So we go to the new, but we're going to do it in order in the Bible. Old Testament, we know it's not in there. New Testament, we know it's not in the Gospels. We know it's not in the book of Acts. So then we can start moving through, okay? Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, there it is. 648. So now I'm going to go to page 648. That's where the book of Ephesians starts. And it is most definitely more than one page. Some, 648, some books in the Bible are only one page. So like, you can flip past it really fast. Ephesians is not. It's about three pages in mine. Okay, so chapter two. Sorry, I like all kinds of notes in here. Okay, chapter two, verse eight. So we're gonna go chapter two. That's the first number. We're gonna find the big number two. Okay, so I'll do it this way so you guys can see it a little bit better. There's the. Do you see the big number one? And then there's the big number two. So you just kind of run your finger. Your finger will be going like this, but I can't bend my wrist that way. There's a big number two. Now we need to find the little bitty number eight. Right, there's two numbers. So we have the big number, the first one, and then the little one. So do, 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 do. we keep this, okay. Well, there's number seven, so eight must be. There it is. There's that little number eight. We found that verse. Great job, guys. So I will read it. Um, I'm gonna read it from my paper because that's the version that, um, we have been using and it's a little bit different I have we know how there's different versions of the Bible where the words are maybe a little bit different translated a little bit different um, but they're okay they're all good this is NIV and your guys is memory verses um, are I know Jacob's telling me it's an IRV guess what I already knew that I knew that. Um, that's okay thank you for the reminder so Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and this is, I'm going to start with the junior versities. So if you are not up to memorizing three lines, four lines, and you're like, I just want one sentence, I got this verse for you. It's the first part of our memory verse. And then the versities, you're going to do the whole thing. So JV, junior versities. I'm going to say like kindergarten and down, but you pick. You know your skill better than me. <clears throat> God's grace has saved you because of your faith in Christ. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. God's grace has saved you because of your faith in Christ. Got it? Next is the verse 8. These are, this is the long one. This is like probably first grade enough, but again, you pick. I'm not going to tell you you don't get your treat if you memorize one or the other. You pick. Um, God's grace has saved you because of your faith in Christ. Now we're going to go dig a little deeper. Just your shovels are going to dig a little deeper. Your salvation doesn't come from anything you do. It is God's gift. God's grace has saved you because of your faith in Christ. Your salvation doesn't come from anything you do. It is God's gift. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. So let me know how you're doing finding those verses. Um, let me know how you're doing memorizing those verses. Let me know how you're doing period. I want to know how you're doing. I miss you guys. So uh, I'm going to grab my little buddy again. We're going to do a prayer. See you in a minute. So now my little buddy and I, we're going to uh, pray for you. Um, just a reminder, you can send me um, or Jacob any prayer requests that you have, any praise reports that you have that you want um, us to talk about um, during Kidopolis or not. It can just be secret between you and me. It's okay, buddy. Um, and we'll, get, we'll make sure that those get prayed about, okay? So let's pray. Um, dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you so much for all the joy that you bring me in my life um, and all the blessings that you've given me. Thank you for letting me know Jesus um, so that I can kind of put on my Jesus glasses when things seem bad and I can know that those problems aren't problems that are going to stop me from getting close to you and uh, being able to see them in a different way. Thank you so much, God, um, for all that. And I pray for the health and happiness of all my friends and everybody who's watching this. I hope they are having an awesome summer. Um, we love you, God. We pray in your son's name. Amen. Okay, guys, we hope that you have an awesome week. Um, we hope that you're enjoying the sunshine and we hope that you enjoyed our lesson today in the So and So Show and a little bit of time with Butterbeer. Um, hopefully, we're going to get back together real soon. 
um, and hang out with each other. Miss you guys and I love you. Do you so much. Love you more. I'm not sure. Just keeps going up and up. Um, talk to you later. Bye. Ma'am, can you identify which hedgehog poked you? Mm. Mm. They all look the same.